Back guys to another episode of Fish and Arrow. In my, one of my recent videos, I told you guys I was going to do a boat tour video when I got a free day of time and stuff. So we're about, we're a few days before Christmas and I decided I should come out here before I go on my trip to get this video done for you guys and because my family down in Florida is going to want to see the boat so I can just have them watch the video so I don't have to explain it a hundred times. I mean, I love talking about the boat, but you know, it'll just be easier. So I'm going to start in the front and I'm going to explain to you guys what, what I'm going to tell you guys what this boat is. So what we have here, we have a Triton 2000 Triton TR-19, meaning it's a 19 foot boat. And in the back here, we have a 2005 Mercury XR-6. And it is a dual console, which you guys can see right there, dual console. And up front here, I have a swinging tongue. If I don't have a swinging tongue, it would definitely not fit in my garage. But the swinging tongue swings under instead of to the left or to the right, which is pretty cool in my opinion. And the trailer, I have a disc brakes, so trailer brakes. They're kind of like surge brakes. I'm pretty sure that's a pretty good advantage in my opinion. And that's about it for the outside. I mean, pretty nice color, pretty. I'm gonna get in the boat. Just walk around one more time so you guys can see it. See the dual console. And now I'm gonna get in the boat and explain to you guys what's in the back. What I have back here. So, back here I have a co-angler seat. I don't really fish with seats, but I just decided it would look better since I have my butt seat up there. I had this one back here. So we have two live wells here. We have two 12 gallon live wells. I'm not really sure if you guys can see in there, but there's really nothing to see. And they run off of um, separate pumps, meaning if one of my pumps were to go out, I could use the other live well and not have a problem. And that is, this is a box where I keep all my soft plastics. And then this is the co-angler box. I don't really have anything in here but some um, jackets and stuff because it's pretty cold out. And then that's about it for back here. And then I'm going to talk to you guys about how I charge the boat and everything. So back here I have these kind of containers for storing stuff. And then below these storage things, I have my oil reservoir right there. And then I have two batteries, two right there. And then my cranking batteries under that, under this container. I'm going to take it out that container and then I have a special edition three bank pro charger and then I plug in an extension cord right here so it's kind of hassle for real. all I got to do is open up this compartment and just make sure that those red lights are on that the boat's charging and then that's it let's go ahead and put these back in there they just kind of rest on top just to maximize my storage which is pretty good even though I haven't really put anything in there yet but that's fine I will eventually there we go. That's about it for back here. If I didn't already say that's a 150, um, that's about is all I need. The size of the motor, that's about all I need. So we have three seats right here. That seat in the middle, I'll show you. This seat in the middle actually comes out for when you're fishing, just slides right out. So I don't have to worry about ruining the leather in my seats. It just turns into a step. I'll leave it in there for now. So the left here, it is where the co-angler can put their rods, just right here, line them up, strap them down right there. And under here, I have a pretty good leg room. I, I mean, I'm 6'4", and I could fit my legs under there perfectly fine with plenty of space. In here, I have a bunch of different kinds of, I have a bunch of different stuff. I have hand warmers because it's really cold when we go out there on the water. And then I have a scale, all of my, my license and registration stuff. And I have some mounts and scissors and pliers and everything that I'm going to need for the day that I go out on the water. So over here to the right, we have a hot foot under there. And then we have all of our gauges right here, speed gauge, PSI gauge, you know, trim gauge, all of them. And then we have, this is actually just an old graph that was on the boat when it was first made in 2000. So I don't ever really use this graph. I use this one right here, the Lawrence HDS5 Gen 2 model. It's a pretty nice graph. There's a lot of features on here. 
And then we'll talk about the um, switches right here. I can get a pretty good light. So these are my two main power switches right here, as you guys can see. And then this right here is my bilge pump. So I have automatic bilge. And then these are my nav lights for the front and the back. And then the um, nav lights light up. And then I have my like floor lights right there. I actually added the, that LED under there and then I have one on the other side too. See, so my um, under my feet light up, which is pretty cool in my opinion. We actually added that ourselves. And then I have this light on the side and then all the boxes up there that I'm about to show you and the back boxes actually light up with lights in there as you guys can see, which is pretty cool. So that's what the nav lights are, I'll turn them off. And then I have my live well right here and then my pump out for the live well for the, I can either do both or just the one on the right or the one on the left and then the recirculation and then I can have it all on timed so I don't have to worry about coming and looking in the live well and seeing what level it's at I can put them I can put the live well the pump out and the recirculation on both and then I can put it flip it to timed instead of manual so I don't have to manually press it and then here we have my favorite feature we have the nice horn and then we have two trim switches right here we have one trim blinker trim switch right here they both work and then one right here and then that's our throttle you know that and you put it in gear and then you use the hot foot that's how a hot foot works if you didn't know but that's about it for this right here I'll put this cover back on Oop, upside down there we go and then right I don't know why the heck that's in there but I'll move that here we have a cooler uh, I got some um, can't really see in there but I just have some water bottles and stuff in there the lighting is not the best in the garage but I didn't want to do it outside today because we have pretty good wind mile an hour gust here is where I keep my tackle I'll sh talk to you guys about what I have in here um, I have a pretty good bit amount in here most of it's upstairs and I don't really have all of it in here but I have what I need for the day that I go out I have my frogs right here in that box if you guys hopefully you guys can see and then I have my poppers and spooks right there and then buzz baits square bales deep diving baits right there and then shallow crank baits rattle rattle traps well, what i really like about this boat is that you can be really organized because you have these um kind of like plastic things to uh line up the boxes and then i have i, I just realized this a couple days ago this right here is actually a built-in thing for um measuring fish which is pretty cool i don't have to worry about buying one it just kind of sits right sits right here and then that's it right here pretty awesome in my opinion slides right in that's it and then I have two rod lockers I have one on the left and then one on the right and then this is kind of where I put all of my main stuff most people put their soft plastics in here but I have so much other equipment like camera gear and tripods and stuff and the pedestal for the butt seat whenever the water gets rough and then life vest and all my safety equipment's in here. It actually goes to the front of where the fish finder is. So I have pretty, a bunch of stuff in there. All of my stuff you need out on the water in case something was to happen, like a, um, a special, like a kit with band-aids and stuff in it, just in case you know, you never know what happens getting out there on the water. Then in here, I have one rod locker. This is actually just my spinning rod locker keep all my spinning rods and reels in here but this side has tubes I can hold probably 12 in there but there's six holes so I just keep uh, four spinning reels in there and that'll be about it and then I'll add some more for the time being I don't really need that many and then in here I have all my bait casters this side does not have tubes which is fine to me I could probably fit a lot more in there so I have a couple in there and then up here I have my butt seat, which I do not ever use. I normally have it out, but since it would match with the back seat in the back there, so I have it in. But I have another HDS 5 Gen 2 right there. They're not linked together. I didn't want that. But um, it's still a great unit. They both work. And then the right trim. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I have two switches right here. The one on the right right there. That is my trim switch for up and down. And then that one right there is just my nav lights. And then that's another graph that came with the boat. That's actually black and white. That one actually doesn't work, but it's just unplugged. And then I have a Minn Kota Maximum right here. 65-pound thrust. Great trolling motor. That's all I really need. A weedless prop. 
and that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. And let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Have a great day. And Merry Christmas.